In this video, we're going to do three examples of integrating with spherical coordinates. For our first example, let's show that the volume of a spherical wedge, kind of like this apple slice shape here, is 2 thirds times the angle of our slice. So that's the angle here I've labeled in the xy plane, basically determining how much of the apple we get, times the radius of the apple cubed. So that radius is this height. This would be tricky in rectangular coordinates, but it lends itself well to spherical coordinates. So we would like to figure out bounds for the spherical radius rho, the angle down from the north pole, that's phi, and how much we rotate through the xy plane, that's theta. First, let's do rho. So if I'm looking in this apple slice, I can start at the origin and go all the way out to the peel of the apple. So that means that our spherical radius goes from zero to the full radius of the apple, so from zero to r. For phi, notice I have the full slice here, from the north pole all the way down to the south pole. So phi is bound between zero and pi. Now for theta, what you could do is say, hey, the volume of this shouldn't matter if I've sliced parallel to one of the coordinate planes or right in the middle of the first quadrant, which is how it looks here, but I'll, I'll do it the way it's drawn. So let's say that the angle from the positive x-axis is alpha, and then we start our slice so that theta is bound between alpha and alpha plus the slice angle. You'll see as we integrate that it would have been equivalent to say zero is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to the slice angle. I set it up this way though, just so that we're measuring off the positive x-axis. This domain of integration is really nice with spherical coordinates because notice all of the bounds are constants. We don't have anything like a type one or type two region relating any of these coordinates to each other. They're all bound by constants. So we can set up our volume calculation. We'll integrate from zero to capital R for rho, zero to pi for phi, and alpha through the slice angle plus alpha for theta. When we compute volume using a triple integral, we're integrating the function one. And then because I've switched into spherical coordinates, I'm gonna pick up a rho squared sine phi. Then with the way I've ordered this, the differentials need to be d theta, d phi, d rho. This integrand is nice, it factors into a function of rho times a function of phi times one, that could be the function of theta. And since we're integrating over entirely constant bounds, we can split this into the product of three single integrals. So I'll write that this volume is just the single integral from zero to r of rho squared d rho, times the single integral from zero to pi of sine phi d phi, times the integral from alpha to the slice angle plus alpha one d theta. Now we just anti-differentiate each. The first one is gonna be rho cubed divided by three, evaluated at capital R, subtract off evaluating at zero. The second one has an antiderivative of negative cosine phi. We'll plug in pi and zero. And then the third one is just integrating one. So that answer is going to be the width of the interval that we integrated over, which is the slice angle plus alpha minus alpha. So you see that rotation by alpha ended up canceling itself out. Okay, for the first one, we get r cubed over three minus zero. For the second one, we get one minus negative one because it's negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of zero, so that's, that's gonna end up being two. And of course, at the end, we get times the slice angle. So you put this all together and you get two thirds times the angle times the radius cubed. Let's look at this example. You might recognize this one because we already did it once with cylindrical coordinates. Now with cylindrical coordinates, we ended up with eight pi over three times the square root of two minus one. Hopefully we get the same answer with spherical coordinates. Theta has the same meaning in spherical coordinates as in cylindrical coordinates. So the start of my problem is the same way. We take our solid here, enclosed between the cones z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, and below the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals eight in the first octant, cast this shadow down onto the xy plane, and we see that theta, which is one of our coordinates for spherical coordinates, goes from zero to pi over two. That sweeps us through the first quadrant in the xy plane. Little r is not a spherical coordinate, but it might be useful to know that that goes from zero to two, we'll see. What are the other coordinates that we can recognize here? 
Well, this is a solid object. It's like a quarter of a solid ice cream cone. Rho is the length of the line segment from any point in this region to the origin. So if I pick any point in this region, what is its distance to the origin? Well, I could be at the origin, or I could go out, out. What's the farthest I could go? The farthest I can go would be to land on the ceiling here, which is the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals eight. That's actually the sphere rho squared equals eight. So this line segment would be the longest line segment that we could draw between any point in this region and the origin. So this tells us that zero is less than or equal to rho is less than or equal to the square root of eight. All right, so we've got two of our spherical coordinates. Last thing to do is figure out what phi is. So here's the z-axis. Measure down, measure down. How far can we go down the globe from the North Pole? And that is the farthest that we could go down. So that's the farthest angle of rotation that we could pass through. So this angle here would be our greatest angle of rotation for phi. So we can start on the North Pole. Phi is bounded below by zero. And then whatever this angle is would be the upper bound for phi, but we haven't figured that out yet. How do we determine this angle? Well, notice it's riding along the edge of the cone. In fact, as we saw when we looked at spherical coordinates, the equation of phi equals a constant is a cone. So we have to figure out what phi we should associate to the cone z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, so to find the upper bound for phi, let's use the cone. What I'm gonna do is take both sides of the equation z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared and convert them into spherical coordinates. So on the one hand, just pure spherical coordinate conversion, z equals rho cosine phi. And then as we talked about, x squared plus y squared is rho squared sine squared phi. So we equal the square root of rho squared sine squared phi. And again, that's just straightforward conversion from rectangular coordinates to spherical coordinates. Kick out x, y, and z, just focus on what's happening in the middle here. Phi satisfies the equation rho cosine phi equals rho sine phi. So what angle phi makes that true? You might see it already, or you can cancel out your rows. If you want to, you can divide both sides by cosine phi. We're looking for an angle between zero and pi for which tangent equals one. Hopefully you recognize that that's just pi over four, right? That's like 45 degrees. So our upper bound for phi is pi over four. So notice every bound we have here is a constant. So we can go ahead and set up our volume calculation. We're gonna triple integrate from zero to pi over two, that's for theta from zero to pi over four, that's for phi. Zero to square root of eight, that's for rho. We're doing a volume computation, so we're gonna integrate one. And then I need to write rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta to match the ordering of the bounds. This is a really nice integral because all the bounds are constant. The integrand can be factored into a function of rho times a function of phi times one. So we can say that this is going to be the integral from zero to pi over two d theta, which I'm just gonna go ahead and say that that's pi over two, times the integral from zero to pi over four sine phi d phi, times the integral from zero to square root of eight rho squared d rho. So that's gonna be pi over two times anti-differentiate sine phi, you get negative cosine of phi, then we'll plug in pi over four, subtract off plugging in zero, times the antiderivative of rho squared, so that's rho cubed over three. Same story, we'll plug in square root of eight, subtract off plugging in zero. So we have pi over two out front, and then negative cosine pi over four is negative one over the square root of two, minus negative cosine of zero is ultimately plus one, and then times the square root of eight cubed is really like two times the square root of two cubed all over three. Okay, we're gonna simplify this to look like the answer we have at the top. So it's pi over two. And then for the next terms, let me do a common denominator of root two. So that'd be root two minus one over root two. And then for the last one, to cube that, that's two times two times two, which is eight. 
square root of two times square root of two times square root of two is times two times square root of two. So eight times two times the square root of two all over three. Now we can cancel the twos, cancel the square root of twos, and we're left with the answer we wanted. So this volume is eight pi over three times square root of two minus one. I think this approach is easier than the cylindrical coordinates approach. I think the integration was nicer. With cylindrical coordinates, I didn't actually go all the way to the end because there was a u substitution, so I kind of left it to you to do. So I think that this would be the best approach to setting up this problem, although it's also possible with cylindrical coordinates. Okay, let's look at this example. We want to use spherical integration to compute the mass of the body with density function sigma of x, y, and z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, occupying the space between the spheres x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9, with z greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so we're looking for the region between two concentric spheres, but only the top half. I think I don't need to draw a picture for this. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1 is the same thing as rho equals 1. And then the other one is rho equals 3. So the bounds on rho are clear. We're going from 1 to 3. z greater than or equal to 0 means we're at the xy plane and above. So we're in the northern hemisphere. That means if we rotate down from the north pole, 0 is less than or equal to phi is less than or equal to pi over 2. Pi over 2 stops us on the xy plane, stops us at the equator. Then there's no constraint here, like we're only in the first octant or something like that, so theta is going to be from 0 to 2 pi. We have the full upper hemispheres for these spheres. Okay, so recall that the mass is going to be the triple integral of the density function over this domain. So let's go ahead and set this up in spherical coordinates. It's going to be the integral from 1 to 3, that's for rho. Integral from 0 to pi over 2, that's for phi. Integral from 0 to 2 pi, that's for theta. Sigma of x, y, and z is the square root of x squared plus y squared. In spherical coordinates, that's rho sine phi. So that's the substitution we make for that function. And then we need rho squared sine phi. And then with the way we ordered our bounds, d theta, d phi, d rho. Once again, we can split this into the product of three single integrals. So we'll have the integral from 1 to 3 of rho cubed d rho, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine squared phi d phi, and then times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 d theta. The first and third integrals are easy. For sine squared, you want to use the power reducing formula. Sine squared of phi is 1 minus cosine of 2 phi divided by 2, so we'll make that substitution. So the first integral we can go ahead and compute. That's going to be rho to the fourth divided by 4, evaluated at 3, subtract off evaluating at 1. And then times for the second integral, we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 2. And then let me replace our integrand with 1 minus cosine 2 phi divided by 2 d phi. And then the third integral is just 2 pi. Okay, so for the first one, that's going to be 81 fourths minus 1 fourth. Now we can anti-differentiate the middle expression. So that's 1 half minus cosine 2 phi over 2. So the antiderivative of 1 half with respect to phi is phi over 2 minus sine 2 phi divided by 4. Then we'll evaluate that at pi over 2, subtract off evaluating it at 0, and then times 2 pi. Let's see, 80 fourths is 20, so we'll have 20 times 2 pi times plug in pi over 2, and we get pi over 4 minus sine of pi over 4, which is actually 0, then minus 0, minus 0. Okay, so we have 20 times 2 pi times pi over 4, so overall that simplifies to 10 pi squared. So that's the mass of that body. Okay, that's our last example. Thank you for your attention.